90% of all AI character generators are fundamentally broken and the companies selling them know it. Have you ever noticed how every AI tool promises consistency, but then gives you a different face, outfit, or lighting every time you try to make a character? Like you finally make it work and go, Cool, let me do that same character again, just so the next image turns out looking like their cousin. And the truth is, it's not really your fault. You didn't mess up the prompt or suck at image generating, if that is even possible. What most creators don't realize is that character generation isn't broken because of your prompts. It's broken because you never got clarity on which tools to use. So when you try to use the ones you have right now for something deeper, like actually making a character that shows up consistently in a comic, story, game, or short film, you just can't. Last year, I was spending three to four hours the night just trying to get one character to look the same across different poses. Burning those credits, swapping between 10 different styles, and zooming in on hands, eyes, backgrounds, and trying to piece together something stable. I even had folders labeled maybe usable if cropped. Sounds funny, I know, but that's how low the bar was. But I'm not telling you this to complain. I'm telling you because once I realized the problem wasn't me, it changed everything. I stopped tweaking prompts and started testing tools because I wanted to know what's actually working right now and what's the tool that gives me consistent results without needing 20 images, 50 tweaks, or a lucky seat. Because if you're a creator, you don't want to experiment. You want results. To wake up, load your tool, drop in one image, and get back the same damn character every time with the same face, same vibe, just posed or dressed differently. So in this video, I will show you the exact tool you need to get consistent characters you can actually reuse in videos, stories, ads, or games. For this, I chose the four most popular options. And to make it fair, I will be ranking all of them on five core principles. Each model will be awarded points based on how good it is in each principle. The first one's character consistency, probably the most important, and it is what tells us if a tool can actually remember the same face across different shots. Like, does the character look like the same person if they're sitting, walking, smiling, frowning, wearing different outfits, or do they randomly morph every time? Character consistency is worth 30 points, because again, if your character doesn't stay consistent, nothing else matters. Next is training requirement. This one's about how much input you actually need to give before the tool starts giving you usable results. Can it do it with just one image or does it need 15? This matters because the more images it needs, the more time and friction it adds. This one is 20 points max. Then we've got output quality. Not just if the image is sharp, but are the details clean? Is the lighting realistic and does it feel finished? Output quality is also 20 points because even if it's consistent, but looks off with weird lighting and cheap textures, it's still not usable. Now column four is add-ons. This is where a lot of tools fall short. Add-ons means can you actually do anything beyond just making a picture? And add-ons are 20 points. And last is price. Not like is it cheap, but is the value there for what you're getting? Some tools give you tons of credits and features on the free or starter plans. Others lock basic stuff behind $40 subscriptions. I rated this based on how far your dollar actually goes, especially if you're someone testing things out or running lots of generations every week. Price is 10 points because it's a smaller piece, but it still matters. You have probably already figured out that the maximum amount a tool can receive is 100 points. So with that all being said, let's jump into the first and most used tool for image creation. So the tool everyone starts with is Midjourney. If you've been using AI for more than 10 minutes, you've probably tried it. You can punch in almost anything and get something that looks gallery ready with that moody lighting and clean colors. It makes your work feel expensive, even when you barely tried. But if you're trying to make characters and not just random pictures, you've already felt the catch. The consistency problem, where you want to use the same character across multiple scenes. So when you drop in your reference image and prompt something new, and what comes out kind of looks the same, but not really. Face is a little off, eyes don't hit the same, even the outfit changed slightly. And the more you try to switch scenes, different poses, new lighting, the more the character mutates. You're just refeeding the same image over and over, hoping it sticks. The real problem here comes when you want to make 15 images of the same person. You're stuck manually guiding every one of them. No matter how many prompts you tweak, it's never truly your character. You're constantly babysitting the AI, dragging the reference into every frame, and still watching things shift. So on character consistency, it only scores a 19 out of 30. It is pretty when it works, but you're never really in control. Now, training requirement is where it becomes obvious that this tool wasn't built built for long-term character use. There's no training. You can't upload three images and say, this is the character. You're working image to image, which means the second you change anything, you've lost the original character. It's 11 out of 20 here because it's usable, but only if you've got time to prompt like a psychopath. Let's give it credit where it's due though. Visuals. Midjourney is still a beast on output quality. Lighting, depth, and shadows, it nails that polished cinematic look. So if you want something that stops the scroll, it will give it to you. Especially if you're going for stylized or moody shots, it delivers. That's why it gets a 17 
16 out of 20 here. Now let's talk features or the lack of them. No pose control, no way to edit a face or change expression after the fact. You can't sketch a frame, drop in a stick figure, or nudge anything after it generates. And if it doesn't come out right, that's a reroll, then another and another. This slows everything down. And that's why it landed at six out of 20 on features. And finally, the price. It's not the worst on $10 a month to start, but there's no free tier anymore. And the cheap plan gives you a limited number of generations. The bigger problem is that you're gonna use way more credits than you think because you're constantly retrying, tweaking, re-rolling just to get something usable. So while the number looks good up front, the actual cost is higher. I gave it six out of 10 for price because it's affordable to try, but expensive to depend on. Final score is 59 out of 100. The image quality is there, but when it comes to character control, consistency, and long-term creative use, Mid Journey just doesn't give you the tools. It's great for a one-off concept shot or an aesthetic vibe, but if you're trying to build with it and not just browse cool art, it's not built for that. Now design. Most people hear about it and move on because it's not getting daily YouTube shorts made about it, but if you're a creator actually trying to get usable results without losing your mind, you should probably be paying more attention to it. The consistency here is better than you'd expect. Once you go through their consistent character setup, it's not long, just upload a few images and tag what's important and it actually holds. The face stays the same and expressions change without changing identity. You can pose them in different ways and the character still feels like the same person. Now, is it problem proof? No. If you start pushing extreme art styles or change everything at once, you'll start to see it drift. But for grounded, clean content, it is good. That's why I gave it 24 out of 30. Reliable and not just once, it holds up over time. Training wise, it's smooth. You don't need 20 photos. In fact, I tried with just three and still got a usable base. Obviously, the more variety you feed it early on, the more flexible your outputs will be. But that's true with almost any model. The biggest downside here is the weight. You're looking at around 20 to 30 minutes for the model to train, which definitely slows things down a lot, especially when you are trying to stay in flow. But besides that, you upload, click through a couple of prompts and start generating. That's 13 out of 20 for training because it is great, but those 20 to 30 minutes are definitely pushing it down. Now, output quality is solid, like genuinely solid. With HQ mode turned on, you're getting clean textures, strong lighting, and good facial structure. It's not as moody or artistic as Mid Journey, but you're also not fighting it every step of the way. If your goal is to generate usable characters that look the same and drop them into shorts, ads, or social content, you can do that here. Some of the finer details like hands or background integration can get a bit off depending on your scene complexity, but overall it's high quality, especially at max resolution. I gave it 17 out of 20. Features are where design is interesting. It's not the flashiest, but it covers more than Mid Journey. You can generate characters, use a built-in editor to tweak faces or fix artifacts, and you can even create video clips. If you're building animated UGC content or short form edits, having that motion layer built in means less hopping between tools. Where it doesn't fully land is in pose control. You can adjust angles, but if you're trying to get precise with limb positions or feed it a custom sketch, it doesn't have that level of control. It's more generate something solid and tweak if needed than build shot for shot scene. Still, it earns a 15 out of 20, $8.99 per month to start. Or you can stay on the free plan and still get daily credits. You get hundreds of images for under 10 bucks, plus the ability to test everything before spending a cent. That's a pretty good deal, especially if you're still figuring out your workflow. And for creators who are testing styles, characters, or visual concepts, it lowers the pressure. You can experiment without worrying about burning through $40 worth of credits just to see if something works. That's why it gets an eight out of 10. So design's total score, 77 out of 100. It's not trying to be everything, but what it does try to do, it does pretty all right. All right, scenario. This one's more of a pro tool and you feel that the second you open it, it's not really made for casual messing around. It's more like something you'd use if you're trying to build consistent assets for a game, a storyboard, or some kind of visual library. So yeah, it got structure and it does reward people who are willing to sit and fine tune it. In terms of consistency, it performs pretty well once you've trained a character model properly. If you upload a solid set of five to 15 images that show a character's face clearly and from a few angles, you can get decent results. The face usually stays the same, clothing details can hold, and expressions don't completely derail the identity. It doesn't give you wild variety out the box, but it does hold structure. I gave it 23 out of 30, which is good, just not the most flexible. Training is manageable, it's not instant. You'll need to prep a folder of images, go through a guided setup, tag things right, and then wait a bit while it builds your model. But it doesn't ask for 50 photos or weird file formats. Five clean shots is enough to get going. And if you follow the prompts, it's pretty hard to mess up. So yeah, it needs more setup, but still doable. So I gave it 13 out of 20. Now output quality. It's not bad, but not amazing. Somewhere in the safe middle with their flux model and a bit of guiding, you can get stuff that looks clean, sharp details, faces that hold together and okay lighting. But if you're used to the high end mood of mid journey, this one might feel a little flat. That's why it gets 15 out of 20. Where it stands out a bit more is in control features. You've got access to things like pose control, where you can change it up with reference images. It doesn't have full pose control like another tool we will be talking about.
talking about though. You can also do facial tweaks and some light retouching. If you like having more buttons to push, this tool gives you that, but no animation, no video, and no easy post editing. So even with all those tools, it maxes out at 13 out of 20 for features because what's there is great for stills, but doesn't stretch much beyond that. And then the price, this is where most people lose their interest in it. It has no free tier and you're looking at around 36 to 45 dollars per month just to get in, which for some people, especially solo creators or anyone testing things out, just doesn't make sense. You do get a good set of features and some pro level control, but you're paying a premium for that and not everyone needs it. So I gave it three out of 10. Final score is 67 out of 100. Scenario is not a bad tool, but it's more niche, more structured and more built for people who already know what they want to build and have time to dial it in. If you're just looking to whip up a character quickly and move fast, this probably isn't it. But if you're building detailed scenes and want control over every pixel, it can get you there if you don't mind the price. Now open art. And I'm just going to say that out of everything I tested, this one actually solved the consistency problem. So let's break it down. On consistency, it's 29 out of 30. You drop in one image and it nails the face, the vibe and the identity. Over and over, it doesn't matter if you switch the lighting, try a close up, change outfits or rotate the angle. It still looks like the same person and you don't need to mess with seed weights, chain prompts or work with it through generations for hours. You're not prompting whole essays or trying to reverse engineer someone else's lucky result from Reddit. You just upload your reference, click generate and it comes back clean. Training is dead simple too. You're not uploading 10 variations, tagging facial angles or waiting half an hour for a model to process. There's no data sets needed and no confusing setup. You simply drop one image, hit go and within the time it takes you to make a coffee, it's done. It's crucial to mention that adding more images will boost the results but even just one image makes the characters already look close to perfect. The character locks fast and you're generating in seconds not minutes. For most people watching this that's the difference between testing an idea and never starting. So it's a full 20 out of 20. Nothing else came close. In output quality you're getting access to over 100 different style models with everything from clean realism to stylized anime to that Pixar adjacent look. The images are high resolution out the gate. Lighting feels cinematic not washed out and details like skin, eyes and texture come through polished not plastic. If something's even a little off you're not re-rolling you just fix it right inside the platform without any other apps and no Photoshop. It's fast, it's clean, and most importantly, it's buildable. That's why it scored 19 out of 20 here. Now for the features, this is where open art stops being just another AI tool and actually starts to feel like a real creator's platform. Not only can you generate static images, you've got actual control. Pose control means you can guide the body. Pose editor gives you a full 3D rig you can move around. So instead of sketching, you control a full mannequin to guide the shot, which is ways more precise and helpful than sketching. Full in painting means if a hand, eye or corner looks off, you fix it right there. Expression replacement that lets you change the character's mood or reaction. So if a shot feels off or you want to change the vibe, you can adjust it without starting over. And if you're working on UGC or short form projects, the image to video option lets you bring those same characters into motion. It's a full stack. It's stuff you'll actually use to finish real work. That's why this one lands at 19 out of 20. Let's round that out so it hits harder and feels more complete. Finally, the price. Technically, you don't even have to pay to start. There's a free plan that gives you 40 trial credits, full private generations, and access to premium features for seven days. Plus, if you hop in the Discord, they toss you another 50 trial credits so you can actually test the real stuff, not just a watered down version. After that, it's $14 a month on the essential plan or just $7 if you go yearly. So yeah, not free forever, but what you're getting here is crazy for that price, especially if you're used to burning through credits on other platforms and still ending up with something that looks like your character from 10 feet away. Here, you're paying for confidence. So that's an easy eight out of 10. The final score is 95 out of 100, the highest across every tool I tested. When we take a look at the whole board, it is without a doubt a clear winner. Now, maybe you're wondering, if this thing's so good, why haven't I seen it everywhere already? The answer is simple. The way things are moving right now in AI character creation makes the timing perfect. We're in that weird phase where most people still think this stuff is clunky or unreliable, but the software itself, it's already changed. The models are sharper, faster, way more stable, and platforms like OpenArt are finally putting those upgrades into something you can actually use without babysitting every generation. This isn't maybe an a couple years thing anymore. It's already here. Most people just haven't noticed yet. I've spent months testing these platforms, scoring outputs and tracking reusability. So I'm not guessing here. I've done all the numbers and open art didn't just beat the others. It made the others look like workarounds, but this goes way beyond just picking the right tool. What we're really talking about is a change in how creators work. Characters aren't just one-off images anymore. They're reusable, flexible assets that plug into everything you make, whether it's storyboards, animation, 
ad content, or full-on short films, having one character that shows up consistently changes how fast you can scale. And right now, before this becomes the norm, that's when the early advantage hits hardest. Once everyone's caught up, the gap closes. But if you get in now, you'll already be way ahead. So you've got a choice. You can keep fighting the prompt battle and stitching together images from three tools hoping for one to look all right. Or you can streamline everything into one platform that just gets it because you don't need five tools. You don't need to be a designer. You just need one place that works. So click the link, try open art. I've tested everything so you don't have to. Now it's your move.